Hello everyone, I'm going to walk through on how to beat Scythe of Amon on Brutal Difficulty while playing as Artanis. Got a request from a subscriber for this one named Jason Kim. And for mastery skill points, we're going to be using Power Set 1, Shield Overcharge Duration and Damage Absorption, Power Set 2, Energy Regeneration and Cooldown Reduction, and Power Set 3, Chrono Boost Efficiency. And then I will also be playing with another one of my subscribers in this walkthrough. So the subscriber I'm going to be playing with is named Rhyme, and he is absolutely crushing me with mastery levels. He's playing as Rainer, and as everyone can see, I clearly have not been playing enough StarCraft II co-op or even ranked because, oh man, my level is way low <laughs> compared to everyone else I play with nowadays. Okay, so just popping straight into this. I'm just going to start pumping out some probes, and I'm going to be using this project power field right here. I'm going to be using this as my uh, field for building my first gateway, and then in my cybernetics core, and other tech buildings, so on and so forth. As soon as I get 150 minerals, I take my probe over here, and I throw it on a warp gate. And just keep in mind, the whole while, I am pumping out probes. Just keep on pumping out those probes constantly. Okay, next thing I throw down is an assimilator. Oh, and by the way, if any of you didn't realize I'm playing with a Raynor teammate, you should have seen that just a second ago. But just to make that clear, Raynor and Artanis. Okay, now we're just going to keep on pumping out probes. Soon as this warp gate finishes, I will throw down a Cybernetics core, probably somewhere like right here or right there. And then we will move on from there. Okay, assimilator finished up. I threw three probes onto the simulator right away. And I'm going to wait until I have, I think I'm going to wait around like 17 probes or 18 probes on my mineral line. And then I'm going to throw down a second assimilator. Okay, like I said, as soon as the warp gate's done, pull the probe over here, throw down the cybernex core. You want to get that tech as soon as possible. And I'm going to use some of my minerals and get some, uh, get some zealots out here. And every single time this is cooled down, I'll just keep on pumping out a zealot. Because I want to get a little bit of an army generated before we start moving out. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to move over to this voyage, uh, voyage sliver, I think it's called. Here, let's let's take this away for a second here. Void, yeah, void sliver. Okay, so yeah, first thing you want to do is go to this void sliver, which is this one on the mini map, as you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen. And then later on, we'll go over to our where our expansions will be located. Okay, yeah, like I said, I waited till about like maybe 16, 17 probes, and then threw down that second assimilator. Now I got in another zealot, and then also I just started getting the Twilight Council here, and I'm just going to keep on pumping out probes. And then we I believe my teammate, uh, Rhyme, he is just going with a bunch of Marines at the start, and then in just like a minute about from now, I think we're going to start pushing down the ramp right here, and then we'll get that sliver. we got to take out that first attack wave. Not going to be a problem at all. I've got orbital strikes. He's got Marines. We also have shield overcharge. We've got lots of stuff backed up just in case we need it. Okay, now I'm also throwing down a warp robotics facility, and the strategy I'm going to be using here is we're going to be going Zealot, and then we'll go Immortal, and then also, can't remember the other guys, and I'll let you know soon. <laughs> uh, the other guys, they're like those little worm crawling things that are, Reavers, there we go. Yeah, so, yeah, Zealots, Reavers, Immortals, and I will eventually throw in, I will eventually throw in some of those Dragoons for AA. And then I'm also, right from the start, I'm getting this Whirlwind ability. And that's actually really great because we're playing against Zerg. And we'll get some really good area damage. Instantly just burn right through all those Zerglings. And then, you know, any other type of melee units that try to surround us. And then, of course, if those units come together, that Whirlwind ability is great for that as well. Okay, and as you can see, we are completely saturated. That's where you want to be. Really good economy that way. And I'm just going to pile up all my extra probes right here so they don't get in the way over here. Now, if I'm... I don't think... Well, I'm not 100% on this, but I'm pretty sure if you get too many probes on your mineral line, they start bumping into each other and they kind of like bounce back and forth like from these mineral spots and it's just like it's a little bit less efficient. I'm not 100% on that, but I think so. Anyways, that's why I'm piling them over here, just because our expansion isn't ready yet. Alright, now I'm taking all of these units. We just did a... Nice big push in here and just destroyed everything. I activated shield overcharge to make sure that we don't lose the units right in the early early stage of this game. So we clear this one out first because we want to make sure the bonus objective gets safely to the area where it needs to take off. And then we also are clearing out this area right up here to make sure that everything else gets taken out. I was going to use orbital strikes there, but I, just, I changed my mind on that. 
Okay, I also got down a second robotics facility. I really did not need to get down the second robotics facility. That honestly was an accident. You should be fine with just one. I mean, maybe later on once your economy is booming, but at this point, I probably should have spent the resources on something else. And as you're going to see in just a little bit, I, I'm saturating a lot of resources as well. And <laughs> like in about like maybe four minutes, I'm going to have a lot. Okay, so then there, I've got two warp gates out now. And then I threw down Robotics Bay because I want to make sure to get out upgrades as soon as possible for these Immortals and Reavers. And then I, I want to start creating those Reavers as well. And I'm throwing down an extra pylon right over here just to make sure that I have a power field over here. And then I threw down two pylons here so I can start projecting my power field elsewhere. And then I'm going to start pushing in here with my teammate. In just a little bit, we're going to clear out this area right down here first. The enemy is coming for us. Templar. Okay, so we got another Ready bonus objective. Oh, actually, this is the first one. Yep, first one's going in. Okay, and now friends. I am pushing in. And I changed my mind on that. City. I want to go down here because my teammate is uh, not quite up there yet. And I do not have enough units. I I mean, he's got a lot. Rhyme definitely has a ton of units, but I do not. Okay, so we're pulling back over here now. Enemy wave, attack wave is coming in. Okay, first upgrade I'm getting Scarab Housing, doubles the maximum number of Scarabs that Reavers can hold. And then next, uh, Solarite Payload, which increases the splash damage radius of Scarabs by 25%. I just use Solar Bombardment on this wave, instantly clear it out. I'm just, basically, I'm just trying to make sure that our army stays alive for as long as possible. I also use Shield Overcharge right now. If you lose your army right away and you don't have like a good economy, because right now we're only on one base each, I just want to make sure that our armies stay alive. Once we get this expansion, it'll be, a, you know, I would say it's less important to make sure that your army stays alive. Definitely great if you can keep your army alive the whole time, of course, but like it won't matter as much if you have an economy to replace those units. Okay, so I also just threw down three forges, and I'm going to start getting all of the upgrades. Ground weapon upgrades, ground armor upgrade, and ground, er, and then shield upgrades. All level one. I'm going to start here. Okay, I am going to now call down some orbital strikes in just a little bit here. I changed my mind once again, but I will be using them as soon as we push in here. As you can see, I've got a reaver out now, two immortals, and then a bunch of zealots. Okay, and then I blast those, oh, what are these guys called? Void rifts. Blast the Void Rest because I want to make sure the units don't pop out of here. And I just take a couple Zealots over here to finish that off. Just to stop the units from spawning in. And then we finished off this Void Sliver. And then there's an enemy wave that came in. And as you can see, because I don't have any Dragoons, I cannot attack these air units. My teammate Rhyme has a ton of AA, so that's good. So I, honestly, I really don't need to worry that much about AA. But in general, whether or not uh, your teammate does have AA, I would make some Dragoons just in case. Because you can't always always depend on your teammate. I ha happen to be playing with a really good teammate, so I mean that's okay. Like I don't I don't need him, but in your case, if you're playing with a random player, yeah, getting Dragoon's probably a good idea. Okay, I'm also getting the charge upgrade, which allows Zealots to intercept nearby enemies, also increases the movement speed of the Zealots. And then I'll wait till like the very end to get Singularity Charge and Trillet Compression Mesh for the Dragoons. Uh, that increases the attack range by 2, and then also Dragoons uh, gain plus 40 life. Yeah, just going to wait on those because, I, like I said, I'm not using Dragoons yet, so they're not that those upgrades aren't that important. I'll just look out a couple observers here just to detect any cloaked units. And I've got another Immortal here, and I think i got a couple more Zealots. So army's getting a little bit bigger, but <laughs> in just a little bit here we're going to lose some units. And I, I'm going to start saturating way too many minerals. Okay, so next thing we're going to want to do is clear out this area right down here. So as you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen where my mini map is right now, that is where we're going to want to go next because that's where the second bonus objective is going to head. Okay, I'm also getting improved barrier, increases the amount of damage absorbed by the Immortals barrier by 100%. And I'm not going to worry about getting gravitic boosters to increase the movement speed of observers. I really don't think it's worth it. Okay, so yeah, I pushed up here to help take out uh, these units because uh, a bonus objective number three, that's going to come through this area and we're going to have to clear this out too. But my teammate, meanwhile, Rhyme, he pushed in here and he completely de cleared out everything. I had activated shield overcharge, so he was able to completely walk right through all of the stuff that was right down there and did great. Enemy forces detected. Prepare our defense. Okay, so pulling my units back here now and we got another enemy wave coming in. 
and this is uh, where I'm going to need to bring all my units over here. I don't have any of my abilities left. I'm just about to get Solar Bombardment. That will easily take out this enemy wave, and I think I am actually going to use that here. A uh, good thing you can do, I don't think I do good placement on this, but just make sure, like, to, like, okay, so say I click Solar Bombardment, place it, like, right there. Make sure to walk your units away so all of the enemy wave kind of gets baited into that. And as I said before, I don't have any Dragoons, so I need some way to take out these hybrids, so I used some sort of a barbman on them. Honestly, I should have used it, like, right up here and then baited the units into it, so everything got hit by it. But, eh, oh well. It was kind of a waste of Solar Bombardment, honestly, since Ram could have taken all of those hybrids out with his Marines. Okay, as you can see, now I'm getting a Protest Ground Weapon level 2, uh, Ground Armor level 2, and Shields level 2 from our forges over here. And right about now would probably be a good time to start Chrono Boosting these forges. I'm making some extra probes to get onto this expansion. And then I'm going to make sure to saturate this mineral line. Only three probes left, so we're just about there. So yeah, like I said, would be a good time to chrono boost these forges. And <laughs> as you can see, that's exactly what I was thinking myself, I guess, in-game. That is really funny. <laughs> I notice a lot that when I do, when I like cast my gameplay, I think the same way as like when I'm playing. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's honestly really funny for myself. I don't know if it's funny for you, but... Okay, so now we're going to push up here. Bonus ob objective two just got completed, or is just about to get completed here. And now we've got to clear out this little area, and then we're going to have to attack this void sliver, and then the area right back here, so you can completely clear the path for bonus objective three. If you don't do it in this fashion, that's a really good way to lose your bonus objectives. But if you do the same uh, pathing that we're working on right now, it'll be easy peasy for you. Okay, as you can see, now I am floating too many minerals. So what a good, really good thing you could do right now is oh as you can see i'm just starting to get those dragoon upgrades a really good thing that i could do in the future or you could do if you're playing this uh make sure to like put a ton of gateways down like maybe right there right there in your base just throw them wherever you can where you have power fields right throw those in and then soak up some of those excess minerals i have just soaked up a bunch of them because i warped in more zealots up here but honestly, I can't soak up all those minerals because unfortunately, I have, you know, I don't have enough, I don't have enough warp gates to provide that. Okay, so as you can see, we took out this void sliver. Now I'm taking all these units and we're pushing up into this next area. Enemy wave came in here and started attacking us. That did not turn out well for us. I lost, I think, a bunch of units there. Yeah, my supply just dropped from like 130 to 99. So that was unfortunate for all the zealots I had. Luckily, my immortals very tough, so a lot of them survived, and I have a bunch of dragoons left over. But yeah, my my army size shrunk quite a bit right there. And I think I lost my reaver too. Yeah, I didn't. I don't have any reavers left. And unfortunately, I don't have very much gas. So once once you get those reavers and those immortals, try your best to like hang on to them. Like I said, my immortals they're still alive. They're doing great. But reavers, they they're a little bit more weak than these immortals and they're really expensive too let's look at that real quick okay so immortals 250 minerals 100 gas right that's pretty expensive already reavers however they're 50 minerals more expensive and they cost 200 gas so a whole extra 100 gas each so these guys yeah you don't want to lose them because you're paying a heavy price every time and unless you're playing with the swan teammate it's going to be hard to get these guys back because you won't have very much gas left over and yeah like i'm like i've been saying just make sure, okay, so right now, project my power field, get a bunch more warp gates. I only made two more, but honestly, I should have made an extra, extra like three, just because even if you, ha even though these like charges, they stack, right? You still want to have, like, sometimes you aren't going to have all of your stacks saved up. So it's good to have extra warp gates. And then just pump out a bunch of those zealots, that'll soak up these minerals, and then that'll give you more supply, and everything will just get easier. Okay, as soon as we push up this ramp, I call down Solar Bombardment right away. I don't. I wanted to make sure to clear out those flying hybrids and those carriers easily, so we had a really easy path to just walk up in here and destroy this stuff. Okay, I'm using Orbital Strikes here, I hit that Colossi, and then I hit a couple air units right here and one of those Void Rips. Now we're basically just using Attack Command and crushing all this stuff. Okay, downside is when we did this, enemy wave came in. We both did not expect that. Also got uh, level three upgrades coming from all these forges right here. Anyways, so what I did, I saw that there are lots of flying units here. I projected my power field right here, and all these units, I just did attack command down this way. 
and now I'm going to have these guys attack the air units, and I'm trying to get my units pushed back a little bit. I'm using normal strikes to help throw up the zerglings. I am getting decimated over here, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take my uh, warp gates right here, hotkey, and I'm going to warp in a bunch of these zealots. And like I said before, that whirlwind ability, that did great right there. There were so many zerglings, and they just ripped right through them, tore them apart. It was great. Okay, so yeah, we're finishing off the last couple zerglings there. And now we are going to finish off the last void sliver. So I lost a ton of supply, but we're moving, I would say, you know, decently fast. We could have taken our time instead of going straight for this void sliver. We could have brought all of our units back. But we had enough over here and enough over here. So worked, worked both sides at the same time, got all three bonus objectives, and boom, there is victory. So yeah, great teamwork between Rhyme and I. And uh, thank you, Ryan, for playing with me. And also, thank you, Jason Kim, for requesting this walkthrough. And I don't have any endgame stats to show you, unfortunately, so sorry about that. And that's all I have for you in this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, make sure to leave a like if you like what you saw. Check out the video linked in the top right corner of the screen. And also, join the Discord chat. Link is in the description. We have like 23 people now in there. So let's get like 50. Let's shoot for a goal of 50 people in our Discord chat. The more people in there, the better. Because then we can play on multiple different games, not just StarCraft. We can get games going for other games. All right. Thank you for watching, everyone. See you in the next one.